Section 1. Getting to grips with GUI. First and foremost, what is a GUI, or what we like to call a GUI? By definition, it's a graphical user interface. This means that it's a type of interface that allows users to interact with electronic devices or systems using images over text. And that's probably where the key thing is here. It uses images. It's visual. And this comes from an all-annoying source, Wikipedia. So to give you a brief history, in 1963, the precursor to GUI, which was very desktop-like, was invented by a guy called Douglas Engelbart. This guy was also the guy that made the first mouse. In 1973, it was taken by Xerox Alto and evolved into the first personal computer with a GUI. In 1983, it was released more commercially with um, Apple Lisa and Commodore Amiga, so you might remember these from your childhood, or maybe not, and I'm showing my age. And in the 2000s, of course, we had Windows and the Mac OS X evolution. These days, we have iOS, Windows Metro, phone, and indeed any form of Android out there, Honeycomb, etc. So all of these are genuine, um, is the genuine evolution of GUI. So where or where is GUI? It pretty much is everywhere. Um, by everywhere, I mean it's on operating systems, it's using industrial machines, kiosks, tablets, smartphones, medical equipment, kitchen equipment these days, everywhere. That's GUI, okay? So when I say that, I really do mean that. All of these, for example, are graphical user interface. Photoshop uses one with icons on the side. Um, this doctor's record system has large buttons that I can interact with. Oops, see Daisy, let's get rid of this. Um, and then on Beam, uh, Beamer, of course, you have very similar icons used to represent certain features of that car. And again, in kiosk, again, to simplify um, a way of doing things. So to release GUIs, um, indeed, you'll see it more and more in smartphones that it's actually easier to, to inter interact and to communicate information with iconography and images. So what do they all have in common? Well, apart from that, one could say they all look pretty shiny. So they must be easy to use, right? This comes from a piece of research that says that if things look good, people think they will work well. However, this is not the case. Remember iOS 6 maps? Yeah. So basically, they uploaded or improved their map app to include 3D maps and completely amazing overlays and interactions with the map in their, in their latest iOS. However, it didn't work, particularly if you were in Europe. So customers got very angry with it and indeed didn't even bother operate, updating their firmware, which is crucial for Apple's um, model. More importantly, we need to design for user needs. Right? So user needs could be anything. Does it perform quickly? Is there an app for that? Is my details going to be safe? Are, um, is it easy to use? Is this information that's given me correct? Also, how do I use it? So things like that we need to take into account, and that is how we try and create the best GUI that we can. Design for user needs. Always remember it. Why bother? Well, people ignore design that ignores people. So again, if people don't think that it's been built for them, they're not going to use it. It's going to be difficult for them to use. Um, this is by a designer, Frank Shamiro, who's well known for his stuff. Another key thing is, these skills are in demand right now, right now, right here and right now. So, according to uh, LinkedIn very recently, you can see that user flows and user experience designs are becoming even, skills are becoming even more important in today's industry. So to recap really quickly, GUIs are visual. UI skills are important. GUIs looks, must look well, but most importantly, GUIs simplify what, how users do what they need to do. Cool. Let's go on to section two, the basics.